Okay. I tried one this morning. It didn't work. Uh, I overcomplicated it. What I should have done was planned all this out beforehand, done the poses, and gone from there. Uh, trying to do it ended up making it take way too long. So we're going to start over. Hold on. Okay. So this is an offset demo. Offsets meaning some people very much like to do this with their posing, and that's fine. You know, these are just two breakdowns. So, sorry, correction. There is a pose, a breakdown, and a pose. Um, typically, what people do when they're doing their offsets is they'll just grab the arms, and then they'll just shift the keys over to the side. And they'll be like, oh, offset done. Uh, the downside to doing this is if your lead or somebody else on your team has to go and fix your shot, they end up having to look at a sea of red. And by sea of red, I mean if you look at the graph editor and then you look at the bottom, I'll show you what I mean with the fingers. So we'll grab these fingers, because this is gonna be the best example. And uh, we'll grab all of them, we'll slide them over one. We'll deselect these ones and we'll slide them over one. And we'll deselect those ones and that one. And we'll slide them over one. And what happens is after you now have a sea of red on the bottom, and after you've done that to everything, you end up having all of these controls and your graph editor looks like a mess. Um, typically people don't key the entire pose on their breakdowns either. So you can't really tell which is a breakdown and which is, you know, everything else. So you wanna try and keep it clean. So when you're doing your offsets, it's actually best practice to not do it that way. Um, that being said, with fingers, I'm going to say with fingers you can. You can't see what I'm doing right now, but when you're waving your fingers around, kind of like you're doing the wave, that's when you would want to do it with your fingers. Um, hand animating that in the way that I'm about to show you would take way too long. But we're not talking about fingers, we're talking about the arms. So, well, yeah, I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. We're talking about the arms in this. So I've got my pose, I've got my pose, I've got my breakdown. This is typically our workflow at DHX. So again you need your cushion right at the end right now before i start doing this again i want to set this up in a way where i don't have to move controls around to do an offset so i'm gonna to have to set it up now normally when i'm doing my poses or if you're doing your poses you'll grab both of these and you'll rotate them both up at the same time you'll grab both of the hands and you'll rotate these both up at the same time that's fine you can start that way but after you've done that, you have to remember you have to change it in order to not keep your offsets the same. So what you're gonna do is you wanna pick the arm that's gonna land first. In my case, I want this arm to land first. That's the one that I wanna land, which means that when it gets up to the top, it's gonna get there first, correct? Yes, it's gonna get there first. And this one is going to take longer, which means that I need to take that arm and rotate it down just a little bit and give this a little bit more of a breakdown. So you can see it's taking longer to get up to the top. This one is already at the top. Now that'll make sense in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna key the body there, I'm gonna key the body here, I'm gonna key the body there. I key like crazy all the time. So we're gonna go to the middle. Now this is how I do all of my breakdowns. I'm just going to hit the 50%. Now, if this was tween machine, that's just hitting the middle. Uh, it's the exact same as just hitting auto tangent and adding a key and going back into step. It's the exact same thing. All I wanna do is I just wanna have some motion on the body so that I have somewhere to add a key because now I can flip in between these images like that. And that's how I animate. I don't animate going like, like this, like this, if you were an auto tangent, sorry, I should explain that. Um, if you are an auto tangent, I don't animate like this because you get a false sense of time and that's what you don't want. Right now you wanna focus on the poses. The poses are what matter and you wanna treat every single pose as a drawing. So first place you start is the COG. We're focusing on arms and offset, but the COG is what drives the entire body. So that needs to have the best arc of them all. Now, right in the beginning, he goes up, which means he's gonna go down first. So when he comes up, there's gonna be a little bit of a hang time at the end. So if we go into the graph here, you'll see what I mean. There's a little bit of a hang time. So we hit A, 
it's almost like the bouncing ball, right? Oh, there's a little bit of hang time and it comes right back down at the end. I wish you could see on camera what I just did. It would have made you laugh. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of a breakdown to the chest. So he comes up, rotate that back a little bit. You know what? I want a little bit more of translate X and Z on this. So we're going to get him closer to the end. I'm actually going to bring his COG down just a little bit more. I don't like how in camera it doesn't look like it's moving. There we go. So we'll get just a little higher. There we go. And the rotates, I'm going to get just a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. Okay. Now I want to 50% that. Add a little break down there. Add a little break down on the head. And now I want to work on the arm. So the arm, again, because I'm using tween machine, and that's what everyone here has, I want this one to already partially land in the position. I want this one to drag or get there a little bit sooner, and I want that part to drag up. The fingers on the le uh, his left hand, I want to keep in that pose. So now we've got that. Now on this arm, what I want to do is I want to have this arm still up a little bit higher. I want to have this up a little bit higher. And I want that to be up a little bit higher. And I want those fingers to also be in the crunch still. So when I flip in between, you can see a natural offset. So now this one comes up first. It starts to go down first. This one's coming last. And they both land at the same time because I haven't done my cushion yet. Don't mind the goofy face on them. And I'm not turning textures on because it looks terrible. Ha ah, he's scary. So we're staying in shaded. Um, anyway, so I've got that right there. Now what I want to do is go back to this spot and I want to add my next breakdown. So again, tween machine, 50-50 it. So if this arm on his, his uh, screen right side, if that arm is coming up first, then that means I need to not use tween machine at 50%. I need to get a little bit sooner. And I want to add a little bit more to his shoulder. I want to bring that up a little bit higher and I want to add some more drag to his wrist. So let's follow that arc. There, we've got a nice arc on there too. Coming up and around. But now that I'm here, I want to go through and make sure that my shoulder has some good uh, overshoots to it. So here I want to keep that coming down and there it'll come back up. So it's almost like it bounces. There we go. Okay. Now for the other arm. So the other arm comes up a little bit last. So what we can do is actually keep it behind, keep it behind, add a little bit more of a drag to it. There, and we have natural offset. And I'm just going to copy that previous pose. There, so we have some natural offset to it. Now that I'm here, I'm gonna add a little more breakdown to the chest. So we'll bring him back. Right now, he's going right. So I wanna drag his COG in that direction, sorry, his chest in that direction. And right now, it actually looks like it's stuck in frame because these points are too similar. So I'm going to drop his COG down as well. And I'm going to 50% that again, just so I can start back from that spot. So there's never any harm in redoing something that you've just done. You can't get this perfect every time, even when you're showing a demo to somebody to show them how to do it. It's impossible to get it perfect. But what I want to get across, the main point, is that natural offset in the arms. So if I hit play, that's where we're at so far, right? Okay, so now we're going to do the last part. In stepped, this is the last part. I'm going to, oh, whoops, wrong spot. I'm going to add my cushion. So this is my cushion right now. And I'm going to grab this key and just slide it over a little bit more so you can see what I mean. There, right? It eases into it. So typically for me, this is what I hand in in blocking. It's a little much for blocking, but this is, I, I can do this at a comfortable speed, so this is what I'll hand in. So anyways, you've got this spot. 
Now this arm, obviously, because it comes down a little bit later, we need to hold it back just a little bit longer. Oops, hold it back just a little bit longer. I wanna get those fingers held back just a little bit longer. And the chest should land before. The COG needs to actually overshoot. So what I'm going to do is actually bring it down a little bit. So you can see a little bit of bounce to the COG now because I'm doing the overshoot in what was the original cushion. The chest needs to land as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to there. And let's check that rotate Y. Add a little bit there, add a little bit more there. Some rotate Z, add a little bit. Oh, nope, sorry. I'm undoing what I did by getting the chest there quicker. There we go. Now let's get the head and again, uh, COG, chest, head, in that order. So I wanna add a little bit more of a breakdown to that, a little bit more of a breakdown to that. There we go, let's press play and see how that looks. All right, so we're almost there. And now I want to get this there sooner that there a little bit later and I want those fingers to be held back a little bit longer and here just a little bit longer because what I'm going to do next is uh, in basically I would do this in polish pass so this is if you wanted to do this in your blocking pass you can do this all in blocking so everything is set up so the main part because this is an offset demo the biggest part that I want you to get from this is doing natural offset in your uh, you're blocking basically. So I've already getting this arm up. This arm's already up. This one's almost there. This one just hit the top. This one's coming down. This one's hit the bottom. This one actually needs to be here. And this one needs to be, whoopsies. This one needs to be here as well. So then it comes last. Now I'm going to grab the whole body. I'm going to hit auto tangent. So now the whole thing, there's all my keys. See, so every single breakdown, is an entire key. The whole body is keyed on every single one. Okay, so I'm gonna hit auto again, just in case, and press play. And you can see that the hands land at different times. But now what we're going to do is because sometimes in stepped, it looks fine. Sometimes in auto tangent, it does not. So we're just gonna tweak some things as we scrub through it. Like for instance, I want a little bit more of a breakdown on that and I want to bring the arm in on that. So we're gonna rotate it in. So it comes in, comes up to the top. Here I wanna break that down a little bit more, a little bit more there, a little bit more here. And let's get some of that in there as well. So we can start rotating that in. There we go. And I can bring that up a little bit higher. Let's get that shoulder up there as well. Bring that one down. And see, you can see it slowly. And now this one already lands. That drags behind. That drags behind. That drags behind. This one stays up a little bit. Oh, sorry, it comes down a little bit, my bad. And there, so now we've got that natural offset. There's a little bit of drift on there, right? And there's a little bit of a snap to everything. So let's fix that. Not really part of the offset thing, but I can't leave you like that. It would bug me. And down. Down. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this key and that is my end key. Now I have this entire area here to play with. So because we're in polish, this is what I would start doing in that area. Now you can see that there's a little bit of floatiness on some curves, that COG hits a little hard in some areas. And now that we're in animation, this is the time to fix it. Grab the COG, check your curves first. Make sure nothing is messy and dirty. Clean that curve up. And we obviously need to clean this curve up Grab your Translate Z. We want to clean that one up. 
and we want to clean that one up, right? Nice clean curves. Translate Y, he should come down first, so we're going to bring that down. We want to overshoot, we're going to do that so it comes up and in, but that's going to happen next. So for now I'm going to auto tangent that, right now we're just cleaning them up. If you rotate X, that should happen mainly on the COG, or the chest, sorry. Make sure we've got some there so it cushions nicely. Rotate Y, same thing. Make sure we've got some there. So you don't want to have one solid line here. Let's see. Yeah, so we can tweak that and tweak that and clean that curve up. Okay, good. We have the C, the chest. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I've been talking all morning. Uh, nothing on those. Good. So the rotate X. I want to have a little bit more of a delay on that. And then it hits the top and it drags behind. So I'm actually changing what I did. And then it comes afterwards. And I'll show you how I'm going to fix that. So it goes. There we go. I'll show you that in a second. Right now we just want to fix these. Clean up any mess before we add more keys. Because if you add keys and you have some mess in there, you're just creating more mess for you to clean. And this is what makes some people's animate, not some people, sorry, this is what makes your animation good, is when you go in and you're cleaning up all your keys. So you don't have any strays, anything that like this. That's the stuff you don't want. Okay, so we've got that. Now, like I said, we're going to add one more key in the middle because we're in polish. I obviously want the COG to not just smash into the ground like it is. If you watch it, it's coming up and then down and then it comes and stops basically. So now I'm going to add some keys instead of sliding keys around. So I want the COG to come up a little bit higher at the end so it doesn't just smash into the ground. I'm also going to give it a little bit of an overshoot so now if we play the COG, there it's got a little bit of a bounce, hits a little too hard. So I just need to add just a little bit more. And there, so now we've got the COG, right? Okay, now for the chest. The chest, we've got all that animation on there where it's dragging behind a little bit. Again, I'm changing things because now that I'm actually in the polish stage, this is where sometimes your blocking that you did to show the director to sell your idea didn't really work all that well. So you have to redo it. Drag that behind and now here, overshoot it and then get it back to where it was. So if you look at the graph editor, my rotate X, I overshot and then got it back to where it needed to go. Right, we can overshoot that a little bit more. So now we've got some overshoot on the chest, right? Now we need it in the head as well. So the head, I'm cocking it to the side a little bit. That's maybe a bit too much for how little he's moving, unless I sped up the keys so we can keep him looking. Again, rotate that down a little. He, excuse me, starts to come down. His head rotates back. He hits the ground. His head comes down because you can see his COG hits. There we go, but let's just get his head into that position. So now we've got, there we go. We've got some movement to that. Now we get to the hands. Okay, so for the hands, we've got all of these nice offsets in there. Let's just give this a little bit more of a rotation backwards. So throughout that move, it's still rotating. Here, I wanna drag it behind. And I want, right here I'm doing it, I want to overshoot, oop, wrong controller. I want to overshoot that, and I want to bring this back. And then here, so I'm going ahead a couple frames, I'm going to rotate the wrist down, 
and let it bounce up and play it, see how it works. Needs a little bit more. And then it comes back up to the top with the elbow right there. Oh, a little bit of a stray curve. Hold on. Comes up. See how it's rotating off to the side at the end? I'm going to copy that key and raise the hand up. So if we play that, there we go. And once I fix the fingers, that'll look fine. Let's get to the shoulder. Let's add some drag to that shoulder. Comes up. Stays up. Comes, stays up just a little bit longer. Hits the bottom and comes back up to the top. So now if you watch the shoulder, there's a little bit of a bounce in there and there's a little bit of bounce in the hand. And we still got that offset in the arms. Now let's fix the other arm and then we're going to do the fingers and that'll be the end of this demo. So we've got a little bit of a rotation that I can stick in there. I want to add a little bit more there. I want to keep that elbow out because I got to follow the arc of the elbow. Here I want to rotate that up. Nope, sorry, that I do not want to do. I want to rotate this up and I want to rotate that up. I want to get those fingers back into the curl. And then as he comes down and that hand lands, this one, I'm basically going to get it into that 90% position. So if you look at the graph editor, I'm just getting it into that spot later. I'm going to grab this hand and I'm going to let it snap down and then come back up to the top, which I actually did not just do. So we need to get that there sooner without shifting keys. Hold on, where's my keyframe? All right, so this is my keyframe. So anything in here, I can just do myself. So I'm going to delete these two keys, actually. And I'm going to get that hand there sooner. Now I'm going to overshoot it. You guys just got to watch me screw up. How's that? There we go. So we trace that motion. Doof. Elbow comes down. Elbow comes back up. And now we've got offset. So you got to watch me mess up and you got to see the final. Now let's just get those fingers in there and do exactly what I'm trying to teach you guys not to do. Oh, wait, there's a messy arc on that arm. Hold on. I can't. I cannot let that stay. It has to be changed. There we go. Okay. Now fingers. Let's get rid of those. Fingers here need to stay in that position. Fingers here need to stay in that curled position. Stay in that curled position. And then as they hit the bottom, now they come out to the top. So we've got like that. And what we actually want to do is key them. Again, the tween machine, key them at the end. And as they come up, they curl ever so slightly. Okay, so now we've got there. That's much better. But we still have another thing we can do. Unselect that. We're going to grab the other hand. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep that in that curl position. Keep that in its curl position. Keep that in its curl position. Sorry, I have to go backwards a few times. Keep that in its curl position. And then right there, it unfolds at the very end. And we're going to get it to the max. And as it comes back up, it curls ever so slightly. So if I turn off all the curves, you can now see fingers. Now this was done at home with no planning at all. So I hope this answers all your questions. The main things that I want everybody to get from this is the natural offset in the keys. So instead of having both arms up at the same time and having them both up at the top at the same time and both coming down at the same time, I posed it in a way where one of them gets there before the other, one of them starts going down before the other, the other one catches up, this one lands, this one's still behind, and then at the end they both land. But right in the middle, you can see it. And if I hit play again a few more times, you can now see the natural offset without sliding keys around. And the graph editor just looks like this. 
And if you showed this to a lead, they would know by looking at your graph editor that these are your poses, that's your end pose, and this is your overshoots. Anybody who knows a graph editor could look at this and know exactly what that is. I'm sorry that keeps popping up. I don't know how to stop it. But there you go, overshoot demo. I hope that answers all your questions. And if you have any more, just ask your lead or a senior or somebody beside you who you think knows. Have a good one.